Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. Losers in this year's College Hoops Transfer Portal. The first one. I'll be honest, I don't know what's going on at Oklahoma, okay? So Oklahoma, remember, three years ago, Porter Mosier coming off a Sweet 16 berth at Loyola of Chicago. And this guy is the toast of college basketball. I remember arguing Indiana. That was the year they hired Mike Woodson. Indiana, go get this guy. I remember he had previously made a Final Four. Well, he goes to Oklahoma. This is now what, year four? And it's been a disaster. I mean, the first two years they were really bad. This year, they were good early, fell apart in Big 12 play, missed the tournament. And I, I don't know what's going on, but I can tell you there, there's some real consternation, I believe, in that program right now. Uh, I can just say there was a moment in time where people were saying that Porter Mosier, who obviously has uh, Chicago roots, was headed to DePaul. I was told that was a little bit more serious than a lot of people were led, led to believe. But I bring it up because Porter Mosier, uh, Oklahoma, lost their top three players to the transfer portal off of not even a very good team. Javion McCollum goes to Georgia Tech. Milos Uzan goes to Houston. He will be their starting point guard, replacing Jamal Shedd. And Otega Owe, of course, will be going to Kentucky. And so, listen, we spend so much time talking about all the portal winners, especially in the SEC with all that NIL money. We didn't even mention, by the way, Missouri's had a good portal season. Ole Miss has had a good portal season on top of Kentucky, on top of uh, Arkansas, on top of whoever. I think Oklahoma has had one of the worst portal seasons. I think they, you can argue they are one of the worst teams going into the SEC next year. I mean, when you're talking about teams that could finish in 16th place in the SEC, I think Oklahoma is one. Next one, Wisconsin. Wisconsin's a weird one, right? Because they just feel like one of those programs, they're never going to be in bidding wars for players. But sometimes you got to at least put up the money to keep your own players. And they lost arguably their two most important players, two players that we talked about in the winner's section, A.J. Store and Chucky Hepburn. A.J. Store is a really good player. Listen, I know, you know, hot and cold, you know, kind of only does one thing, that's put the ball in the basket. But 17 points per game in the Big Ten, and I thought he took them to another level. Now, in defense of Wisconsin, you kind of heard the second the season was over, he was probably going to go to the highest bidder, might go to the NBA. Uh, you know, the, I believe he has a girlfriend in Kansas, so they were in the mix. Turned down Kansas early, got a better offer, ends up going to Kansas. Okay, I get that. But to lose Chucky Hepper, three-year starter that has been in the program right before his senior year, that one's tough. And I think that's one where you got to go to your collective and say, look, we don't have to get into $2 million bidding wars for great Osabor, but I do think we have to have the money in place to make sure to keep the guys that are already in the program. So it'll be very interesting to see kind of in the off season going forward. If Wisconsin, I, I don't know. It, it's just, it's just a weird one to me. It doesn't feel like that should be a place that has players getting picked off their roster, but that's exactly what happened in Wisconsin. And remember they were a good team too. Ended up as a five seed. They beat Purdue in the big 10 tournament. It's not like they were bad. They just did not do well in the portal. Let's keep it going. A couple other teams that were losers in the portal. Uh, Miami. Something weird going on at Miami. We talk about weird things at Oklahoma. How about Miami? Two years ago, make the Final Four. Two years ago, they're a feel-good story, and they were kind of at the forefront of the NIL stuff. Long before Great Osibor was a $2 million man. Remember, Nigel Pack's money got out there about two, three years ago, and that was a big story then. So they have a down year. You look at the roster and say, well, they could bring back everybody. Then they kind of lost everybody to the portal. They lose Norchad O'Meara, who ends up at Baylor. And I think this one was as important, losing Wuga Poplar, who obviously is now still testing the transfer portal. Uh, you know, talk about, could it be Kentucky? Could it be somewhere else? He's from uh, 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 Philadelphia. Could it be Villanova? But bad loss for them. Bensley Joseph, a uh, backup guard, who I thought was very good is headed to Providence. So you talk about a bad, bad, bad offseason for Miami. That is one right there. Uh, two programs that I think were hurt by lack of NIL funds. First one, people probably know the second one, maybe not. First one, Seton Hall. Listen, I, I feel bad for Seton Hall. 
And I think it's proof that even in the high major level, um, there's just going to be programs that are better resourced than others. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. And Seton Hall, we've talked about it. It's very public. They just don't have the NIL funds to compete. And they're now almost a feeder system for the bigger power fives. Like it's one thing if if you're a mid-major school losing guys to the power fives. This is a power five, power six program losing players to other power five, power sixes. Lose Kadari Richmond to St. John's. That one hurts. Dre Davis, your best kind of big-ish guy, uh, goes to Ole Miss. And then on top of that, uh, uh, Dylan uh, Adewusu, who, who transferred in from St. John's, he's in the portal. Now, he may come back. I just feel bad for Seton Hall. You win the NIT. I think they were really well coached. Shaheen Holloway is an alum. I just don't know if they have the money to compete. And I'll be curious. Like, if they don't get the money, I know he's an alum, but I'm kind of curious how long he stays. Another school that I think probably struggled a little bit more with traditional NIL or NIL maybe from the collective perspective, that is San Diego State. So San Diego State, listen, uh, you know, they win the national champion or they, they, they're they the national runners up two years ago. And I think locally, kind of some of the local businesses stepped up to give those kids opportunities. Lamont Butler did a lot of local stuff, but the collective, I just don't think was where it needed to be. You lose Lamont Butler. He's a fifth year guy. And I think, you know, I think he's excited to go to Kentucky, but I also think, you know, in a perfect world, Hey, if the money was right, maybe I come back or I just go pro. But I think he just realized there is money to be made in college basketball. And unfortunately, it's not going to be at San Diego State. Speaking of which, this one was weird. Um, Elijah Saunders, who I thought was kind of one of those emerging guys. Um, San Diego State always kind of has a guy or two that, in my opinion, is like a year away. This was a kid averaged. He only averaged six points per game, but he only played about 20 minutes per game. And I thought he was a guy that a year from now could be kind of a breakout star. He ends up hitting the portal going to Virginia. And I think what's important to note there is that after those two guys hit the portal, um, basically San Diego State got really aggressive on social media about promoting their NIL. About the collective, we got to donate. This is the new game. Everybody get involved. I know a lot of the media guys down there were doing stuff to kind of help the, help promote it. So San Diego State, I thought, did not have the greatest offseason. Two other losers, but not in the traditional sense. And I promise we'll get to a break because we are going long here. But the first one, I think North Carolina uh, is kind of a loser. And let me explain why. Now, they don't have a ton of misses. They don't have a, they didn't have a ton of needs going into this year. Last year, they had a ton of needs and they did a good job filling them. This year, they really only had probably two needs. One was shooting. They got that with Cade Tyson. But two, they needed a big man. And it didn't really work out. I think they were waiting on some guys that they thought would maybe hit the portal that didn't. Then they get in scramble mode. They go after Cliff Omiyori, who ends up at Alabama. There were reports that their NIL offer was significantly larger than Alabama, and he chooses Alabama anyway. Um, you know, they, they made a push for Jonas Adu, didn't even get a visit. I don't know that I could sit here and say it's been a disastrous offseason for North Carolina. And there are still some pieces that could potentially be available. Coleman Hawkins, who of course is from Illinois. I think North Carolina, if he comes back to school, that's kind of a guy that they would look at, but he's not a traditional center. He's not replacing Armando Baycott. So I would argue that that was a little bit of a loser effort on North Carolina's part. And the last one might surprise some people. I'm going to say Washington. And let me explain why, um, why I think Washington is one of the bigger losers in college basketball's transfer portal this offseason. And it's pretty, to me, pretty interesting. It's because when you look at Washington, they hired a first-year head coach in Danny Sprinkle. And I think they thought this guy's coming off the Mountain West regular season championship at large bid. They're going to clean up. And in one year, he gets Utah State to the NCAA tournament. And we're going to do the same at Washington. Well, really, if we're being honest, Washington really made zero significant moves until great Osabor this week. Then I think they largely overpaid for great Osabor uh, when he committed. And so you look at that school, they obviously raise a lot of NIL money. Now I think they're spending it a little bit recklessly to try to salvage this off season. Did get a nice guard named DJ Davis. He was the star at Butler last year, but what does that mean? Butler wasn't good. So I look at Washington and I think they put, you know, they, they missed on a lot of guys. 
They get great Osibor, but I think they overpaid him. And it kind of goes back to what we talked about a few days ago. Is you overpay for this guy and he doesn't produce? If he's the highest paid player in college basketball next year, you're going to expect your boosters production similar to the best player in college basketball. It's not going to happen. I think Washington is a big loser.